ito. Um, and those are the daily. Maybe you can come home. <coughs> I'm to be here with you today to celebrate the work of Mr. Dennis David. I thank the Central Bureau of Genealogy for organizing this event and inviting me to speak on the importance of Malaysia-Dutch relations. When the invitation came, it took me a while to gather my thoughts together to find a trust of this address that I would like to deliver to you today. I could, of course, expand on the mutual importance of both trading nations to each other. After all, in terms of trade, the Netherlands is Malaysia's 13th most important trading partner. And while Malaysia is Netherlands' 19th largest trading partner. Together, our total trade came to 6.6 billion euro last year. I could talk about how, in the facing of falling world trade and economic austerity, bilateral trade grew at a positive level throughout 2008. I could even touch on how steep in the Malaysian economy, Dutch interests actually are, with investment totaling more than 1.5 billion euro last year alone. But these are things that are merely euros and cents, and I thought that would be somewhat out of place in, in a genealogical setting. I could for sure talk about how the Malaysian student population in the Netherlands is growing by the years, how all of a sudden we realize that this small country although small in size, has in fact produced 17 Nobel Prize winners in chemistry, physics, <coughs> medicine, economics, and peace. All the number of Dutch tourists who come to Malaysian shores, probably in search of warmer weather, and the thousands of Malaysians who come to watch the tulips bloom here in the Dutch heartland. I could even talk about our ongoing cooperation in the areas of agriculture, science, technology, defense, <coughs> research, and development, and on biotechnology. There were, without end, a whole host of things I could talk about which could point to the strength of Malaysia-Dutch relations. But then I thought, if I spoke to you about all that, I would be missing a golden opportunity <coughs> to really speak to you about the basis of how these relations were built, and how prospered and have prospered and how important these relations are to us. What I needed was something that would bring these relations into context. What I needed was something that would explain why, for so many years, our two countries managed to sustain so many different strands of cooperation. Mm -hmm. The Dutch landed on Malay shores in 1641. For more than 183 years, the Dutch took control of the prosperous Malacca trading route. Between the Portuguese, the Dutch and subsequently the British, it was the Dutch which stayed the longest in Malacca. And despite wrestling control of the Southeast Asian trading route from the Portuguese, the Dutch remained almost absent landlords. They were in control, yes, but they did not attempt to rule the people who lived on the land, nor did they try to impose their way of life on the people of Malaya. Today, the relationship has moved from strength to strength. Today, Malaysia and the Netherlands are two countries which share a common goal as regional hubs of two important regions in the world, the EU and ASEAN. Rotterdam is rapidly developing into the main gateway to Europe for Malaysian products such as palm oil, electrical and electronic products, chemical and timber-based products. Malaysia and the Netherlands share the same aspirations for a peaceful world order. Both countries have a constitutional monarchy and a democratic parliamentary system of government, and both believe in the benefits of free trade. Ladies and gentlemen, for relations to prosper between two countries, person-to-person -person contact is important, but sometimes even that is not enough. The poet Ralph Waldo Emerson once described it thus, the glory of friendship is not in the outstretched hand, not the kindly smile, nor the joy of companionship. It is the inspiration that comes to one when he discovers that someone else believes in him and is willing to trust him. The ties of history are deep. They can never, they can never be severed. But if it takes a lot of effort to sustain those ties, 
but it takes a lot of effort to sustain those ties to ensure that relations are smooth. And it takes both sides to work on those relations. We have a saying in Malay, if, one, if only one hand is clapping, it makes no sound. There is a lot of mistrust in the world. Now more than ever, we distrust that which is different. This is part of human nature, but it is also part of human nature to be curious, to want to know about different things. And, and in the learning of it, we learn to appreciate the differences and to build bridges. Understanding other societies, culture and civilization is important, especially when we have seen so many current examples of how hatred can breed so easily when we fail to build those bridges or when we let distrust get the better of us. Stereotyping is the worst form of insult in the diplomatic profession. That is why we are trained to look beyond the representative, beyond the diplomat, to what they represent and to the values that they hold dear. Today it is not unheard of to have a Chinese-born citizen representing Australia or a Muslim to be appointed as the Vice President of the Bank of America. At one time, Malaysia's head of delegation to the Islamic Conference was a woman and a non-Muslim to boot. But she was comfortable in her role and she did her part exceedingly well. It just goes to show that you can never put people all in the same category. Malaysia is particularly, particularly is a unique society and it would be difficult to hold any particular person as a typical Malaysian. There is no such thing. Malaysians are all different and one of the reasons why we have been able to maintain harmony and accord throughout these years of nationhood is because we adapt to one another. That is why, even though Malaysia is a nation where Islam is the official religion, people identify us not through our religion or our ethnicity or our race or the color of our skin, but through what Malaysia has stood for since its independence. And although Malaysia is not a rich country, it is to many a land of opportunity, where today some 2 million foreign nationals choose to find employment. In a society where there is a migration, migrant population, there is bound to be social problems, problems of interaction and assimilation. In this aspect, I read that the Netherlands faces similar problems as well. And while we might not look the same, we don't speak the same kind of language, our challenges are similar. But for those of you who have been to the country, you would know that like the Malacca Sultanate before it, where traders from all over came to stop at the port and to mingle with the people, Malaysia today is equally diverse and is home to many cultures, both Asian and Western. Malaysia, as a tech goes, is truly Asian. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, as a writer myself, I know how gratifying it is to have your work published. But to have others honor you for your work is a special kind of appreciation. So I would like to extend my congratulations to Mr. Dennis Kiwi, a Malaysian, for winning the Dash Incentive Prize for Genealogy. I hope that it is a preview of many more th good things to come. Thank you.